Hey guys, welcome back to RBR, and I've made it here just in time for us to witness our first ever rocket launch on the channel that I'm told is just about to happen. What an absolute monster, guys. This is the Barabbas Rocket 900 based on AMG's GT63S. And as you can see, the name Rocket is very, very apt indeed. Now, this is essentially a hypercar with huge changes on the standard model GT63S. Now, that standard GT63, we reviewed it on the channel, and it is a monster even in its base form. It's got 640 brake horsepower. The 0 to 60 is 3.2 seconds. It's already the fastest four-seater on the Nürburgring, proving itself faster than even things like the SLS Black Series. But then, as you've seen with our other Barabbas reviews in the past, Barabbas kind of treat AMG models like AMG treat standard base Mercedes models. They kind of look at it and say, yeah, that's nice, but let us get to work on it. So the first car that they made was the Brabus 800, again, based on the GT63. This had the B40S800 package, which gave 800 brake horsepower, 1,000 newton meters of torque, and a zero to 60 of 2.9 seconds. Of course, you got the Z-Block platinum wheels, which look incredible. You have a much, much more aggressive front end that not only helped with aerodynamics, but cooling as well. As you can see, it's got a lot of carbon fiber as well. The rear also a much more aggressive diffuser, carbon pipes on the exhaust system. Sounds good, goes like hell, but then that just wasn't enough, was it? So then they created this, the 900 rocket. Now I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall of the meeting where someone sat there and said, nah, this 800 isn't enough. Let's make a rocket. And that's exactly what they've done. Here is the Brabus Rocket 900. It is a limited 10 unit car. It follows a rich history of many Brabus rockets in the past. This one though has got more changes both externally and internally than perhaps we've seen before. So let's delve into every single one because there's some really exciting things in this car. Now, firstly, let's talk about this engine. Though it may look familiar, this is not a four litre V8 as AMG produces them to begin with. This has been bored out to 4.5 litres, or actually to be more accurate, it's about 4.4, but we have to round up in Europe. So this is actually a larger displacement engine than you would get in any other AMG GT in the world at the moment. So not only has the displacement been bored out from four to about 4.4, we've also got a new crankshaft, new camshaft, new con rods, all new pistons, as you can see here, and new oil sprayers as well. So there's a lot that's gone on to change that base four litre V8 into something that's completely unique for the Rocket 900. And it looks unique as well. Take a look at the engine cover. It's in a very typical Barabbas finish. It's black with red carbon fiber. And I love the little badge that denotes like a graph of the power with 900 at the top. That's a really, really nice touch. Of course, in addition to this, you get the typical Brabus changes as well, like whole new turbochargers. You can see them right here. And of course, it gets a unique ECU that only goes on this particular car. So what does that produce? We have 900 brake horsepower, as the name gives away. The torque is more, but it's limited to 1,050 on the road. And the zero to 60 has been improved to 2.8 seconds. Zero to 300 is 23.9 seconds. And finally, top speed is 330 km. All of that is insane. And it's completely unnecessary for the road, but then it is unnecessary because it's called a rocket. And it's an apt name for this car because it is a rocket. Of course, as with every Brabus, it comes with a very special exhaust system. It's more of a popcorn machine. Let's have a listen to it.
Now, as you can plainly see as well, loads has been changed on the outside. And as you'll only ever see on Remove Before Race, I want to show you how that actually all happens. How we're going to begin is taking a normal GT63S. What goes on? First of all, the front end. It's the most brutal front end I've ever seen on a super saloon in my life. I want to show you what that looks like. Now, this is very, very different in stance versus the GT63S. First of all, the smallest change is just the grill, where you've got extra air intakes here to do more cooling for the engine. These are all finished in a lovely carbon fiber, and the mouth of it is really, really quite large. But then that, is, that pales in comparison to what you have just below it and on the sides. I mean, these are bigger than any GT that I've ever seen in the AMG range. It's bigger than like the GTR, the Pro, anything of that sort. And it really gives this such an aggressive front end. Obviously, all of this is needed for cooling. And then you've got completely unique wide arches, which are massive. And all of this front end is created with carbon fiber reinforced plastic. I can show you what that looks like. It's super light and these arches are super, super wide. The amount that they extend from the light onwards gives you an idea of just how wide they are. Look how small my hand looks in comparison to the width of the arches. Now, one really great way to appreciate that is when you look at the side sills and you see how much they've had to kind of modify the start and the end of it to make it flow with the new front and rear kind of shows you just how wide this car is, which brings me then to the rear. Of course, the rear has bigger arches now as well. And now these are a bit more bolted on than the front ones, but you can see, again, they give the car a massively wide stance on the road, which looks really impressive. Then you've got the really big wheels. Now, these don't look familiar to you in the first place because they look a different design, but they are in fact the same Z-Block Platinum design wheels, but with a really nice carbon fiber cover right on top of it, it screws in from the rear of it. It's not really that much for aerodynamics, more to give this car, again, a unique look versus the standard Z-Block wheels. So the painted finish, really beautiful on the wheels. The carbon finish is lovely. And when you get up close, you notice that the wheel arches are actually Kevlar, which is something that I've not seen before. Again, very racing, very kind of motorsport themed with this. The grill also lights up on startup, which looks really menacing. I think the most impressive piece of carbon fiber on this whole car has to be this lower mouth. I want to show you a separate shot of it where I was holding it. Again, of course, super light, but just look at the shape of it. It's just so pleasing to the eyes and looks even better on the car than it does in the hands. You see the big wing as well. Again, all carbon fiber. We've got aluminum brackets, very motorsport looking. The diffuser, it kind of looks small now compared to how big the rear arches look. But overall, when you look at the entire package, it looks more like a GT than the standard GT four door does. It looks a lot closer related to the two door track car than the normal four door saloon ever did. To me, it looks like what a R or a black series version of the GT four door would look like, perhaps even more extreme than that because it's got those typical Barabbas traits that you just won't find in a standard production car. I love the little details like the rocket logo where the AMG logo used to be. This is no doubt lighted as well. Even little details like the way that the Barabbas logos on the rear have a nice red edge around them. It's so typically Barabbas to me. And I love these little touches that make the whole car together. Now, you guys would have seen my Barabbas factory video where I showed you how they make all these incredible interiors, but you haven't seen an incredible interior till you've gone inside this Rocket 900. Look at this interior. Typical Barabbas, like, like typical. There are so many lovely little details inside this interior, going from the stitch work to the materials used, the little ideas that they have, and the overall effect is just wow, as it should be. So let's have a look at some of the little details that make the whole thing. First of all, on the steering wheel, you'll notice a very different leather that Barabbas used versus the AMG stuff. So it's a lot more textured and it's a lot thicker as you saw in our factory tour video. So much higher quality, a lot more expensive, but the overall look then is something much more like you'd find in a classic car rather than your modern ones with synthetic looking leather. Of course, you've got the Brabus logo on the lower part of the spoke here, finished in a red napper, which looks nice. I really love this Alcantara airbag here. This is very nice. I'd love to have this in pretty much all of my performance Mercedes cars. Very, very nice touch there. And then you've got the Brabus shift paddles, which are a lot bigger than the standard cars one. They're finished in aluminium. Very, very nice. A nice clicking feel to these. 
But that's probably like the most normal part of the interior. As far as the rest of it, we've got Alcantara covering almost every single section. The dashboard looks really impressive in it, but the most impressive part of the dash and the top of the door card is the micro piping in between the Alcantara. Now, as my C63 Black Series is currently being retrimmed at B trim, they've explained to me just how difficult it is to get something like this looking right. And when it's done to this scale, you can only just gasp in appreciation. I mean, it's all over the seats as well, and it looks really, really premium because of it. But then again, just when you're admiring the piping, then your eye goes to the internal part of the door card, which has this lovely pattern of the arrows up and down, in between then diamond stitching. Again, so many small processes in one small part, and that is what we call attention to detail. That leather covered theme carries into the lower part of the door card, even the inner part where you put your cups and your drinks is leather covered and leather stitched. And I think you kind of expect that of Barabbas anyway. Center console, we've got the one of 10 logo, which is lovely here. The rest of this is pretty much the same till you see the gear stick. I'm not sure I like the look of this. It looks a little bit odd with the Barabbas chrome red logo on top. I think I'd prefer like a silver here. I think it would suit the car more, but at least you have a unique thing. I'm gonna rip a floor mat off. They look awesome. They carry the same theme as you find in the door card, which is those arrows. And you see Barabbas rocket there at the bottom. I better put this back. Then of course the seats themselves, we've got the micro piping as I already said, but you've got diamond stitching and perforations within there which are unique to this car. You've even got a Barabbas plate signed by Constantine Barabbas, the CEO, just to say that this is a one of 10 Barabbas masterpiece. The rear carries through the same theme and this one's got the two individual seats. You'll see on the seats, again, you've got those badges as well. In the second car that we have here, you've got a different version of this interior, which has then instead got a gray or silver stitch as opposed to the red. So a little bit more understated, a bit of a different look. And again, just emphasizing that Brabus can really make your car however you want it to be. One thing I wish they could do is change the driver zone, the digital driver zone, and have a unique Brabus one here for this car. They've done it in past S classes, so I'm sure that that's something that they might be able to do in this. It would have been a nice touch to have a screen here that mimicked all of the interior inside. And all of that's great. We know they make really aggressive exteriors and really great interiors. But now I wanna see what does this thing drive like versus the standard GT63. And luckily for us, we have a racetrack right here. So guys, let's see what this Rocket 900 is actually like to drive on the earth rather than up in space. So immediately with these bigger wheels, I can feel more of the tarmac. I don't know whether that's gonna translate into a harsher ride on normal roads, it's difficult to say. But really when you're driving something called Rocket 900, it doesn't really matter, does it? I think you can definitely feel just in these first few hundred yards, the different track, because it feels a little bit more keen to turn in versus the standard GT following another rocket behind and I don't know if you can see it on my other camera but the thing has an unbelievable presence on the road it just looks absolutely stunning it's literally it's one of those caricatures of a normal car that you'd see fake photoshops on Instagram of super wide cars that can never possibly exist but this is Barabbas of course it exists oh it's got the power Listen to the blow off valve. Remember when we first discovered that in the G63? Or rather, no, it was the Brabus application, not a G63, I'm sorry. But it sounds so awesome. Like I said in that review, it's like a snarling beast when you come off the throttle. You know what, for something with 900 brake horsepower, you would expect it to be a little bit more unruly, but this thing has really got the ability to put down the power on the ground. Really, it does remind me of the standard GT63S in a good way in the sense that I'm not being overpowered by this massive horsepower or torque figure. And in fact, it's just really easy and pleasurable to drive. Here we're coming up to the straight now. Let's put some of that power down. Oh, that is so much power. It's like manhandling a wild animal. And that's exactly what I'm expecting of a Brabus rocket. This is incredibly fun. Could you imagine speeding down a German autobahn with this thing? Absolutely everything would get out of your way. I'm really liking the steering. I'm liking that extra little bit of feel on the turn in that you get in this one versus the standard car. It's got grip, it's got power. It's got the brakes to deal with it. This is incredibly fun. 
So big difference in experience versus GT63S. Not only with the blow-off valve and the unique Barabas exhaust, one thing that's really telling for someone who's so used to the AMG 4-litre engine is how you get a deeper burble out of this 4.5-litre by Barabas. I'm sure you guys can hear it as well. It's a little bit deeper, it's a little bit louder, it's a little bit more menacing, despite being controlled by those same regulations that the AMG cars are. Imagine this in like a rocket C63. Oh. But I think most of all, the thing you take away, it's the power and the looks. And really, I think that's what it comes down to in Barabas. It's a real statement, especially with a one of 10 car. You want something that looks like nothing else in the road and you will never see a saloon that has the presence of this Rocket 900. Well guys, this has been exceedingly fun. I hope you've enjoyed this full review of the one of 10 Barabas Rocket 900 based on the GT63S. I absolutely love this 4.5 litre engine. I absolutely love the look of this car. It's just such a shame that it's gonna be so rare on the road. If you enjoyed this video, please do like, subscribe and share it. And I'm gonna take a few more fun laps because why the hell not? See you guys next time.